To me, this is the good life. Simple, delicious food that can be made fresh from your garden or from your kitchen with clean, simple ingredients, but elevates your life in some way. Today, we're making buffalo-style mozzarella out of homemade yogurt and cashews. Look at that bounce. Look at that texture. And then we're taking that buffalo mozzarella and turning it into an easy panzanella salad using stale baguettes. What could be easier? What could be more delicious? What could celebrate life more than something as delicious and simple as this? So fresh mozzarella is a fresh cheese, which means it hasn't gone through this lengthy fermentation. So to give it just that cheesy kick that we want, we're gonna actually use some yogurt. And I've got some handy dandy oat cashew yogurt on hand. I'm gonna add a cup of this yogurt to my blender. And for that richness, I'm gonna add a cup of cashews. I'm gonna add a half a cup of water. So we're gonna use a cup total. I'm gonna reserve a half a cup for a later step. I forgot salt, so I'm gonna give it about half a teaspoon, teaspoon. And now I'm gonna process this until it's really rich and creamy. To thicken this, I'm gonna cook some agar agar and some tapioca. I'm gonna start out with a half a cup of water in a small pan, make sure it's small, smallish, medium and that it has a lid. Now I'm gonna whisk in one tablespoon of agar agar. Oops. Okay, so agar agar is an extract from seaweed that actually acts like gelatin, so it binds things together. It actually creates a really brittle gel, unlike gelatin, which is sort of a, you know, wiggly gel. This creates a really, really brittle gel that just kind of breaks, and that's not really ideal for mozzarella. So what we're gonna be doing is modifying that by adding tapioca, which sort of softens the gel and creates the elasticity that we want. The combination of agar and tapioca is absolutely wonderful for creating that perfect texture. All right, so in order to cook agar agar, for it to be activated, it must come to a full boil. It's gotta to get to around 208 degrees before that binding property is activated. So. You want to make sure, because we're using a small amount of water, that you keep the lid on the entire time. And you're going to watch it go through this process where it kind of thickens up and turns into this sort of mass. And then as it reaches the right temperature, it will dissolve again into this sort of liquid. And it's going to turn into something that's like molten glass. For some reason that you found that when you measure that uh, cup of water and you put too much in the blender and you don't have quite enough in here, you can always offset it. If it looks like you're just waiting and it's still not liquefied, you can just add a couple more drops of water and just put it back, just whisk it all together. And you can correct that problem. So it's beginning to bubble. We're gonna give it another second. We want it to get to be like kind of molten glass that's gonna just run off of my whisk. Okay, it's beginning to run off my whisk, as you can see, which is what we want. Boiling away, and now we're ready to add the cheese to this. Whisk this right away, because you don't want the agar, which solidifies as it cools, to come in contact with the, uh, with the milk and start form these sort of you know hard threads or lumps. And you want to get that the whisk in there right away and whisk it right away. And we'll get the scraper in there as well and we'll scrape the sides to make sure there's no agar on the sides. We're gonna take three tablespoons of tapioca starch, tapioca powder, tapioca flour, it's all the same. And we're just gonna dissolve it in a tiny bit of water, as little as you need to get this thing to dissolve. Maybe a little bit more water than that. You can also just add the tapioca directly to the blender when you're blending everything, which I forgot to do. You know, that's the beauty of cooking. As, Mike, as uh, Miles Davis used to say in jazz, it's not what you get into, it's how you get out of it. 
So if you understand what you're doing in the kitchen, why you did what you did, you can always fix it. All right, so I've got my tapioca, it's dissolved, and this is becoming nice and thick. Now I'm gonna add the tapioca to this. And I'm gonna whisk it all together, and you're gonna see that this starts getting really stretchy. Look at that. You wanna make sure that you cook it long enough that it's not only stretchy, but it's shiny. The shininess will let you know that you've cooked the starch out of the tapioca and you have no starchy residue in the cheese. That is very important because you want a, a smooth consistency. You don't want starchy cheese. Okay, so look how goopy that is. Just look at that. That is like a molten mozzarella. Now, as I mentioned before, this is an oil-free cheese and it's lovely for things like caprese salad or the panzanella salad that we're gonna make today out of a stale, a stale baguette. If you want this to be a melting, a, a meltable mozzarella, you can add about a half a cup of oil to this, a half a cup of coconut oil uh, to this whole mixture, and that will help melt the cheese. You need the fat to get it to melt. Now, we're gonna make mozzarella balls. And you're gonna start out with a bowl of ice water. That's how we're gonna chill this into perfect little balls. Get yourself some ice cream scoopers. You can make little balls, or you can make medium-sized balls, or gigantic balls. It's all up to you. So what we're gonna do is start off. I'm gonna use this one. Well, maybe, maybe two different varieties. You're gonna scoop the mixture. You're gonna drop it right in here. In fact, when I first started my company, this is how we did it. We made all of our mozzarella using ice cream scoopers, dropping it in here. The formula was different, of course, but this is how we did it. I'll do little balls now. And it takes about 20 minutes for the agar to chill and firm up and turn these into a perfect texture. Afterwards, um, you can do whatever you like. You can use it right away in, uh, in salad or in cooking, throw it into a pasta dish. Um, you can also marinate it in olive oil with some garlic and herbs. I mean, there's so many options for this. It's absolutely wonderful. I love doing little caprese skewers where I make little, like really small melon balls of uh, this mozzarella and I put it on a skewer with cherry tomatoes, for example, uh, drizzle a little olive oil, some herbs on it, serve that as an appetizer. I mean, there's so many uses, but the one thing I've got going on here at my house right now is a lot of stale baguettes. So I'm gonna to have to show you how to make a classic Italian panzanella salad using stale bread and this mozzarella. Alrighty, well the mozzarella's been in the cold water for about 20, 30 minutes and look at it. Perfectly hard, beautiful balls. Just look at this bouncy. This texture is incredibile and you can play, you can juggle with them, but actually you'll want to eat them. Okay, so I'm gonna take my balls out of here, fish them out of here. I'm gonna slice into them and I'm gonna show you how beautiful they are. Look at that wiggle. Look at that. It's just like mozzarella. I mean, it's the perfect texture and it's gonna be so wonderful in the salad that I'm gonna show you. I mean, who doesn't have some stale baguettes lying around, right? Uh, you, you buy a baguette for something, you have a few slices, next thing you know, it's been a couple of days and it's as hard as rock. And you just think, well, I can make breadcrumbs out of it, but what else can I do? Well, I'm telling you, in Italy, stale bread is, bread is a staff of life and stale bread is something that you look forward to because you can turn it into so many different things. A popular salad in Italy is called panzanella, and it's a salad made out of bread, tomatoes, uh, basil, maybe some mozzarella. In the south of Italy, there's something called aqua salad, which is basically um, stale bread that's been soaked up, that's soaked water, and has been revived and put into a salad with tomatoes and olive oil and all those wonderful things. So we're gonna do something similar today uh, with this the, the stale baguette. This is, you know, a couple weeks old. It's just been lying around and I'm just gonna break it up if I can. You can you can chop it up or break it, whatever you like. Into bite-sized pieces, you can hear the crunch. There you go. In the south of Italy, I was told 
that in the old days, and I think even today, when they bake bread, they bake several, several loaves of bread. And they do it so that they have old stale bread that dries out that can be revived and reheated or reused in some other way. Now, there is a way to somehow revive this if you wanted to have uh, you know, a baguette that you wanted to slather some butter or olive oil on. You can take this loaf and just literally soak it in water and put it back in the oven and that will revive it to a degree depending on how dry it is. But this salad is so wonderful. And we're gonna take some beautiful tomatoes. We're gonna make a little sauce out of the tomatoes with some olive oil. You're gonna cut up the tomatoes, uh, depending on size, either into pieces or into halves. And this is really what the good life is all about. Being able to make things fresh from scratch, using up leftovers and reviving them, turning them into something beautiful that can be enjoyed, that, that looks like it took forever to make, but it doesn't. Um, it, we can use up everything we have. I really believe in using leftovers to make new things. What we're gonna be doing is utilizing some of the juice in the tomato. We want the juiciness to come out. You can cut some of these up into little bits so that they release their juice uh, juices even more. And let this sit for a few minutes. Let the juices come out. And, and then we're gonna soak the bread in it. I'm gonna add some salt to this. Oh, and I have some olive oil, very local olive oil, as local as in from our property. I'll take a tour of the olive garden at some point, but this is right from our garden. I'm gonna add some olive oil. I'm gonna add a little balsamic to this. Give that a stir. And you can add garlic if you like. If you want to omit it, you can. I'm gonna add a little garlic. Get out my garlic rock. And I think I'll add about two cloves. I don't want it super garlicky. I want a little bit of garlic to it. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of water on this bread. You didn't see that. <laughs> oh my God, I'm terrible. <laughs> Okay, we've added some water to the bread, we've added, uh, we've got the tomatoes, we're just going to let it all sit for a few minutes, we're going to chop up our mozzarella, and then in a few minutes we're going to combine it all and our salad will be ready. Alright, as you can see, the tomatoes are now sitting in a lot of juice, and the bread is going to soak all of this up and it's going to be fantastic. And the bread has also been soaking up the water, the outside, the exterior is a little soft, the inside is still firm and uh, dry. We're going to put it right in here and mix it all up. This is a great salad to make ahead of time for like a potluck. Uh, it keeps super well. And then we're going to add some basil. So, got some beautiful basil leaves here. I'm just going to tear this. We're tearing it because we don't want the oxidation that happens uh, when it comes in contact with the metal. It just looks more rustic this way too. I can smell the tomatoes, I can smell the basil, the garlic, even the olive oil, which is so fragrant. And, and the colors, you know, the colors of the Italian flag, obviously, green, white, and red. La Dolce Vita, right in gold. And now we're gonna add the mozzarella. That looks wonderful and this bread is so good. Now you're going to want to let it soak for a few minutes so that the, the dressing seeps into the interior of the bread and just moistens it and delivers all this 
unctuous flavor. So we'll just let this sit for a few minutes and then we can enjoy it. This isn't the good life, I don't know what it is. Let's go share some food. You can't have a good life if you can't share with your friends. So always make enough food to share with your friends, both human and non. Oh, do you like that? Is that yummy? Is that yummy, Mr. Argon? This is the Vegan Good Life with Miyoko.